This is not an uh, isolated uh, circumstance in terms of the wages. Uh, pretty much all uh, employees that are Sea Org members worldwide are uh, they're paid a maximum of fifty dollars a week, and that 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 goes for pretty much all the countries that uh, Scientology operates, and that's how much all of the Sea Org members are paid. Um, at Golden Era Productions, um, there were staff members there. Um, specifically in certain areas where uh, they couldn't get all of the work done that needed to be done um, for the different uh, products that we were producing. And um, outside professionals would sometimes be brought in to do the same jobs that, that uh, employees of Golden Era were doing, Sea Org members were doing. Um, in one case, uh, a gentleman that I knew, he was being paid $50 a week, about 7 bucks a day. Uh, to do uh, work on videos, and they were bringing outside professionals in that they were paying $1,200 a day to do the same job that this guy was doing. So to give you an idea of how much they, they might have to pay the people that were working there if they were being paid uh, equivalent wages in the, in the real world, quote unquote. Um, somebody did the math for me one time, and they, they basically said, based on the amount of hours that I was working a week, and for the amount of years that I worked there, that if that were translated into a nine to five job in the real world, I would have worked 40 years worth of a nine to five job at Golden Era. I'm not even 40 years old right now. So by the time, before I was even 35 years old, I had worked 40 years worth of a nine to five job uh, starting at 16 years of age at uh, Golden Era Productions. And a lot of people ask, you know, as long as we're talking about money, well, maybe they don't have, it's a, it's, a, it's a group that has this philosophy, maybe they don't have enough money to pay these people the, for the amount of work that they're doing and all the, the employees that they have. Um, I worked in a cassette manufacturing plant when I first started working at Golden Era Productions. And uh, it was basically demanded that we produce 50,000 cassettes a week that would get sold to the Scientology organizations all, all around the world. And those cassettes would sell from anywhere from $20 to $75 each. So just the, the sheer amount of potential income from our weekly production uh, averaged nearly $4 million that they would make on the products that you know, 10 or 15 people were producing. Additionally, um, during my time there, I designed, built, and installed audiovisual systems for Scientology organizations all around the world. And um, these systems are still being sold and installed by Scientology, the ones that I built when I was there during my 15 years of employment. And one set of these systems that would be sold to an average Scientology organization were worth approximately $300,000. That's how much they would charge the organization to install it and uh, send them these systems. And uh, they've probably made an upwards of 10 to $15 million just on the systems that I installed or built for them while I was there. So there's no lack of funds to be able to pay the people that are working for them. A lot of times uh, when people hear my story or when people hear about what happens there, they ask me, well, if it was so bad, then why didn't you just leave? You know, why don't you just walk out, w walk out and just start over. Well, when I finally did um, have enough courage and had experienced enough abuse that I did finally decide to escape um, in January 2005, I drove off of the property uh, on a motorcycle. Within 30 seconds of me leaving, I was being followed by an SUV that belonged to the security personnel there at the compound. Um, they chased me down the highway as I was heading into the local town, and they insisted that I come back. They're yelling at me out the window, you gotta come back, you, gotta, you, you can't leave, uh, you know, think about what you're doing. And, um, and I just refused, I kept, continued to drive on, and they actually ran me off the road on my motorcycle. They literally just pushed me right off of the road. Um, I crashed, and um, when that happened, somebody driving by um, called 911. Within five minutes, the Sheriff's deputies arrived. They had, the security personnel had already skedaddled back to the uh, property. But um, the only reason that I was able to escape was because I had police assistance. 
and I had two sheriff's deputies escorting me into the local town near the compound. And this is all detailed in police reports that are available on the internet. But um, the, during the course of two sheriff's deputies escorting me into the nearby town, the Scientology personnel attempted to even still intercept me and follow me while the police were, follow, were escorting me. And um, only by the threat of them being arrested by the police did they back off and let the police take me to safety. So when people say, why didn't you just leave, that, that's why. Because when you're there, you, you see and you hear what happens to people that try and leave. And most of the time, they're brought back. And in rare instances, people actually escape successfully and don't end up coming back. So, um, so yeah, it's not the easiest thing for somebody that works there to, to actually be able to get out. And then even then, once you do get out, you don't have any money. You haven't lived in the real world. Um, you don't even know if you're going to be able to get a job, if you're going to be able to eat tomorrow. So there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of aspects to, to how they're able to keep people there and why peop more people aren't leaving and getting out and up here on the stage today. You may, you're going to hear other people up here today that are going to tell similar stories to what I've told you and similar accounts to mine. And, um, and I hope this gives you a glimpse into um, what happens and, and how the different people there are treated. And, um, and even once people do leave and, and once people are uh, able to get out, um, a few people here today um, witnessed just as few as three or four days ago private investigators following me around while I'm driving in Hollywood. Um, attempting to find out who I'm talking to, where I'm going, what I'm doing. I've had private investigators dig through my trash, follow me to my, taking my kids to school in the morning, following me to the grocery store. Um, so there's no shortage of the things that uh, the Scientology organization will do to silence their critics. And in a lot of cases, even the people that do finally get out of there and finally do escape, they're intimidated and har they're harassed so much that, that they would never, ever dare speak out or speak to the media about what goes on. And, um, and finally, in the, in, the, in the past few months, in the past year, more and more people have um, had enough courage to say what happened to them and they're not afraid of what's going to happen to them from the Scientology organization or they're not backing down based on the intimidation that they're getting. And, um, and hopefully by this and, and people carrying these stories and, and getting the word out there, we can expose um, the actual things that occur there. And um, yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully we can end this and other people don't have to suffer like I have. Thanks a lot.